Alrighty guys, hello and welcome back to another video on the channel. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to channels for new. And basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be ranking uh, all the current, well, not all gacha game releases of this year of 2023, but I'd say the more kind of notable ones, the ones I've kind of played and checked out. So let's get straight into things. So I've chosen uh, a decent selection of games that we're essentially going to be checking out here today. Um, so yeah, I suppose let's just get kind of started. So... So the first one up on the list is Acer Racer. This game is effectively a racing game which has a car gacha. Uh, it's one of the probably one of the best racing games I'd say on mobile. However, it is a little bit like a not necessarily pay to well, actually no it probably is pay to win because it's a PvP based game. Um, but it's it's definitely like got some more monetized elements to the game. However, I think it can still be a pretty enjoyable game if you like car racing games. However, I think it's a just a good nice middle of the road being B tier. Alrighty, uh, Aether Gazer. So Aether Gazer is an action anime RPG developed by the developers of uh, Azure Lane, so Yongshi. Um, and honestly, the game is really, really enjoyable. It's got great action combat. It's pretty free to play friendly in terms of characters. The combat design is really good. The story is decent and there's a wide variety of gameplay modes. And overall, I'd say it's a pretty damn solid game if you're looking for an action RPG. Uh, but I'd say it's a solid A tier game. Okay, so next up we have Brown Dust 2. Now, I really, really like the artwork for this game, and I like the uh, the 3D model style of the game. It kind of reminds me a lot of Octopath Traveler. But the issue I have with this game is uh, the daily gameplay loop just kind of just kind of just as but the rest of the game is really enjoyable which is the issue so like the story is good the combat's kind of fun uh the character artwork is really really good and it's a little bit you know cultured if you know what i mean but uh honestly it's a c tier oh no no it's a b tier i just i just i can't put it any higher than that because the gameplay loop the daily gameplay loop is just bad now that being said it may be adjusted in the future it may be made better so it may be raised higher up this list in the future because i generally think it's actually got good bones to the game Alrighty, Captor Clash. This is a side-scrolling action RPG. Uh, I've only really played like a little bit of this one, and the reason I've only played a little bit of this one, I kind of dropped it pretty quickly because I don't think it's a very particularly great game. However, I don't think it's the worst thing on the planet, so we'll put it down in C tier. Alrighty, next up we have a re very, very recent game, so I'm not going to speak too much in this one. Uh, this one's actually going to be a little bit difficult to rate because I haven't really played a whole lot of it yet, but this is Dunmachi. This is a new Dunmachi game, uh, Dunmachi Battle Chronicle, and it's actually pretty fun even though it's a slightly like mid-tier gadget game it's one i've been enjoying a little bit because i like the ip uh it actually got some action combat to it but although very simple um good batch but good good banners and stuff and overall just a fairly fairly decent game although i wouldn't call it anything top tier i'd say it's just a middle of the road b tier Alrighty, so we have eversoul up next now eversoul actually kind of surprised me don't get me wrong, I usually like the AFK kind of idle games, but they're usually like middle of the row kind of games for me that I play for a little bit. But Eversol, I ended up playing for a lot longer than I usually do, and I actually still kind of enjoy it to this day. I log back in every now and then. Uh, just because like the event structure is enjoyable, the different, there's a variety, large variety of game modes, the characters are fun, uh, they're constantly giving you out summons because it's one of those kind of games where you're just showered in summons, which, you know really good for me being addicted to gacha games. So honestly, even though it's probably not like this for everyone, I'd probably put it up in A tier for my enjoyment level alone. Because I actually really, really genuinely kind of like that game quite a bit. Okay, Harry Potter Magic Awakened. This game surprised me. I thought it wasn't going to be all that great. But then I ended up having a blast with it. It's got a very, very interesting, very fun combat card system. Uh, the gameplay and world is brilliant. The art style is, I think, fits the Harry Potter universe perfectly. It's a large variety of game modes. The story is fun. The characters and dialogue are whimsical. I really like this game way more than I thought it was going to. And I think it's actually arguably the second best gacha release of this year. And I'm going to be putting it up in the first game up into S tier. I genuinely think this game is really, really good. And I'm kind of sad that it kind of went under the radar because this game is ridiculously good. Alrighty, next up we have Higgin Aruthal. Now, I actually quite like this game. Uh, that being said, it does get a little bit boring for two reasons. Not necessarily because the game is bad, it's because you just can't really play the game that much. And the reason being is the standard map cap in this game is ridiculously low. Like, ridiculously. Like, you everything requires stamina so you can basically you barely make any progression it's just it's just 
Um, yeah, but that being said, it is a pretty fun game. However, I'm going to put it at the top of the B tier because this game does have some issues in my eyes. If they fix those issues like giving us more stamina, giving us more stamina potions, making it so not everything requires stamina, I probably put it up in A tier, but for now it's going very top of B tier. Okay, we don't really need to say too much about this game. This game's pretty obvious. I've been having a absolute freaking blast playing this game. I genuinely think this is one of the best game release of the year. Obviously, it's a Hoyoverse game. Um, but yeah, it's this is going right at the top of S, S tier. There's there's no it, it, come on. it's it's a Hongo Star Rail. Beautiful graphics, amazing story, gameplay is fun. Uh some of the game modes in this one, they're actually fixing a lot of the problems they have with Genshin, like actually giving us proper end game, like simulated universe is so much fun. And they're doing a massive expansion into it today in this upcoming update, so I'm super keen, I've been enjoying the hell out of the game, and I've been having a blast playing it. Not to say it doesn't have its issues, but arguably, because of its production value, just everything that it does, it's way at the top of the Gacha Games releases this year. Alrighty, we now have uh, King Arthur Legend. I'm going to put this down just automatically into C tier. Uh, I don't enjoy this game. I don't like it necessarily. It's not necessarily because the gameplay is bad, it's just the character design that just... They're boring. They're all, oh, knight number one, knight number two, brown knight number two. Like, it's just like, I, I don't care. Just put it, stay down there. It's not, it's, 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 yeah, it's whatever. I just have no interest in this type of game. Uh, if you want to come play and make this kind of game interesting to me, you need to have one really, really good gameplay, two really good graphics, and three, make the characters actually interesting for these Western kind of games, because this one is not it. Alrighty, next up we have Outer Plane. I actually ended up enjoying this game quite a lot. This game's developed by Smilegate, so it's a, Kind of the successor to Epic 7, but a 3D version of it. Um, game's alright. It's alright. Uh, I'd probably say top of B tier. Uh, actually, no, no. It's kind of like middle of B tier. It's an alright game. I didn't mind it. I had a bit of enjoyment with it. But overall, I would say it's kind of... Yeah, it's alright. If you like Epic 7, you'll probably like the game. But for me personally, it's just like, okay, whatever. I've seen this game before. I've played this type of game. It's nothing special, nothing new. Uh, but yeah, I'd say probably like middle of the road B tier. Okay, Snowbreak Containment Zone. So, here's the question with this one. Is it an A rank or an S rank? I'm gonna be honest, I think I'm gonna put it into S rank. I think this is another S rank game this year. So, the reason why I don't think it's A rank is because Aether Gazer, although an amazing game, doesn't quite do what this game does. So, this game, the reason why I like it so much is one, it's a semi unique thing in the mobile gacha gaming space, because we don't really have a top tier third person shooter like this one. Secondly, the developers for this game have been amazing so far. They've been updating the game very frequently and in quality of life changes, tons of content updates. They've been fixing issues like really, really quickly with the game. They've been on top of things. They've been giving out tons of rewards. The launch rewards were actually amazing. They're some of the, were some of the best I've ever seen. Game is decently free to play friendly. They're just nailing like every single aspect of the game. Now, some people complain that they don't necessarily like the graphics art style, but I would say that's a subjective thing. You may or may not like it. I personally quite like the style even though it's a little bit simple in some places, but in, I quite enjoy the characters, the combat, the world, the universe. I've been having a great time playing this game, and I genuinely think if you're looking for a good shooter game, uh, gacha anime shooter game on mobile, this is going to be it for you. It's pretty damn good. Okay, so we've got a couple of iffy ones here. It's so Attacked Op Destiny. I really, really wanted to like this game. I tried. I genuinely tried. But I'm sorry, this is by far one of the worst gacha game releases of this year. It's just not fun. The gameplay is boring. Uh, some of the design choices they made for some of the game modes just are really, really unfun. A lot of the elements are just not good. Um, the game just has... I don't know. I just... I can understand if some people like this, and I understand this one might be very much my opinion. But this game just kind of wasn't it for me. Uh, I can make an argument for it being in C tier, but honestly, I just really did not have fun with this game. It just don't don't bother. It's it's trying to do what Reverse 1999 was trying to do. Was trying to do that early. Just play Reverse 1999 when that comes out. They're very similar styles of games. Um, okay, so this is there's two Tower of God games here. This one here is the new Idol one that came out like two weeks ago. This one here came out about. I want to say like five, six months ago, maybe a bit longer, maybe a bit earlier. Uh, this game is absolute hot garbage. It is not fun. It is bad art style, bad in face, shitty grinding. It's just don't bother playing this game. Do not touch this one with a 10 foot pole. It kind of honestly just sucks ass. I don't like it. And this is coming from someone, by the way, who's a fan of the Tower of God manhwa. I like the series a lot. 
but this game was just hot garbage. Do not play it. Do not bother. Do not touch it with a 10 foot pole. On the flip side of that, this game was all right. I quite enjoy it. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of idle games necessarily. I know that's be counterintuitive with Eversol, but Eversol is a bit different. This game is like a good like middle of the road. It's got some great quality of life, good characters. If you're going to play an idle game, it's one of the best ones you can play. But yeah, guys, that's my list for the Gacha game releases of this year so far. I'll be making an updated list of this at the end of the year, assuming there are enough changes and some of these positions may change later on. But yeah, this is what I would say to use as a guideline if you're looking for a new game to play. Look at this list and decide necessarily, necessarily maybe something you want to check out here. Anyways, guys, hope you all enjoyed. See you later.